If you're a F1 visa student, you must have heard of the terms I-20, DS-160, CEVIS. In this video, I'm going to explain in detail what exactly are these terms, why are they so critical, and also, most importantly, address how you can modify these details once you have already started your slot booking journey. There seem to be a lot of rumors floating around and we get a lot of questions from students about this. So we're going to clarify this for you. Keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos for the US visa process. We have a dedicated playlist for fall 2024, so make sure to keep checking out the videos which come on this playlist. We also have started an exclusive WhatsApp community for fall 2024 and we are sharing lots of useful resources and tips on that community. So you can join our WhatsApp community. The link for this is right below in the description box. So a USA F1 visa has three important basics. I-20, DS-160 and CEVIS. Even before you think or appear for the visa interview, you need to have these basics in place. And every year we see that some errors or mistakes in these basics leads to visa rejection. So let's quickly understand what these basics are and what you need to keep in mind. So let's start with the I-20. I-20 is the single most important document in the F1 visa journey. In fact, everything begins with your I-20. So when you apply to a university in US and the university accepts your admit, then you can request the university to issue you an I-20. And I-20 is the official confirmation that you have got the admission to the university. In fact, when you go for the visa interview, along with your passport, the visa officer is also going to ask for the I-20. So of all the documents, I-20 is a document which the visa officer is definitely going to look at. Now, keep in mind that just because I-20 is issued by the university, it need not mean that it's going to be accurate and foolproof. Every year we see that universities do make, do make mistakes in the I-20. So once you get your I-20, do a thorough check. In particular, you should be checking your name. The name should match exactly the way it's written in the passport. Check your nationality and check details of your course and your funding. And if you find discrepancy in any of this, do reach out to the university proactively. They will correct it and issue you a new I-20. Another question which we get very, very commonly when it comes to I-20 is, can I have multiple I-20s? Well, the simple answer is yes, you are allowed to have more than one I-20. Let me explain why. Now, in a perfect world, one I-20 would be enough because you just need one I-20 to get your visa and one I-20 to enter the US. So in a perfect world, once you have decided your dream university, you request I-20 from that university, you get it and you go ahead. But we don't live in a perfect world. And in the actual world, what happens is that there are a lot of delays by universities in issuing I-20. Every university has a different timeline in which they will uh, issue you the I-20. So let's say that even if you have requested I-20 from the university, it is not necessary that it will come in time and it will be there in place before your visa interview. Also, you need the I-20 to book the appointment to get started with the visa process. So you cannot wait endlessly for an I-20. So in this scenario, it makes sense to request for two or three I-20s. So let's say that you have got admit into four universities and you're okay with two of them then you can request for two I-20s so that you at least have a backup option in place. The only drawback in this, I would say, is the financial because every I-20 requires you to pay money to pay a certain fee to the university. So you will be shelling out certain dollars on getting every I-20. And another thing to keep in mind is that once you have multiple I-20s, you will also need to declare it in the visa interview. So when the visa officer asks you how many admits you have, Whichever university you have taken the I-20 from, you will have to declare that university. You cannot hide it. So these are two factors to keep in mind if you request for multiple I-20s. But overall, I would say that rather than depending on just one I-20 uh, in place, if you're not sure of your timelines, then go ahead and request for more than one I-20. Next, let's talk about CEVIS. So CEVIS ID is an ID issued to every student who will enter the US. And you will find that this ID is there right on top of your I-20. So when you request for I-20, you will also be able to see what your service ID is. Keep in mind that service ID is different for every university. So if you have more than one I-20, you will see that there'll be two different service IDs mentioned in that. And you need to use the right one. That means you need to use the one which you are going to the US. Now, with the service ID, there's also a fee associated and this is called the service fee. This is a mandatory fee. You have to pay this fee before your visa interview. Every year we see that there are at least one or two students who will forget to pay the service fee and only when they go for the visa interview, they will realize that they haven't paid it. And in such a scenario, the interviews are not conducted. They'll just send you back, ask you to make the payment and come again. So 
either pay the service fee as soon as your admit is confirmed or keep a reminder to pay it before your visa interview. Now, here are some pointers to keep in mind. Service fee is not the same as a US visa fee. There seem to be a lot of confusion about this, but service fee is different. US visa fee is totally different. So service fee is a fee you pay to register yourself as a student and US visa fee is a fee that you pay to get your US visa appointment. And of course, both are paid at very different portals. To pay the service fee, just search for service fee payment. You will see the portal fmg.com. You need to go there, click pay I-901 fee, and you can go there and pay the fee right there. Second thing to keep in mind with respect to service is that it is valid for 12 months. So if you have paid service fee and you feel that, okay, I have deferred my admit or you have changed your university, you need not pay it again. It's valid for 12 months. All that you need to do is to transfer the service. So if your service ID has changed, keep in mind to transfer the service fee also. And transferring the fee is also a simple process. In the same portal, there is a support. So you need to go to the support, write them a mail and explain them that you need to transfer your service fee. Though keep in mind that this takes time. The service fee transfer takes about five to six working days. So make sure that you have enough time to do this process. The third basic, the DS-160 form. I think I can talk endlessly about the DS-160 form because it is so, so important. This is the only document that the visa officer is going to be looking at when he takes your visa interview. You know that US visa processes are not document heavy process. They hardly check any document. But the form, the DS-160 form is the one thing that they're going to see and ask you questions from. We in fact have a detailed video coming up on this, so do stay tuned for that. And if you need our help in filling your DS-160 form or getting it reviewed, do check out all of these services. We also have a self-filling uh, guide, like a DS-160 toolkit. So it's a video guide, you can watch it and even fill it on your own. So do check all the resources that are available to you to fill your DS-160 and make sure that you're spending enough time in filling it, reviewing it, getting it checked before you submit that form. Now, before I go ahead, let me also include a quick note about the visa portal. I see a lot of you referring to the visa portal as CGI portal. Well, guys, CGI portal doesn't exist anymore. That was the old portal. Last year itself, the US Embassy in India has moved to a new portal, which is called US Visa Scheduling. And this is what this portal looks like. Looks like. And in this US Visa Scheduling portal, to book an appointment, you need your service ID, you need your passport number, and you need your DS-160 number. So once you have these three numbers, you can go ahead, pay the visa fee, and book your appointment in this portal. So these are the basics to keep in mind. In the next part of the video, I'm gonna explain the complete process flow as to what are the steps you need to follow and how you can change the details once you have paid the visa fee or once you have uh, made your US visa portal. But before we go ahead, let's pause for a moment. Do comment below and let me know which university you're going for. So right below in the comment box, let me know which university and which course you're going for for fall 2024. Really curious to know. Okay, now that we've understood the basics, let's get into the process. So right from getting the I-20 to appearing for the visa interview, there are about eight steps involved. So let's understand what these steps are. Step number one is getting your I-20. Step number two is filling your DS-160 form. Step number three, creating your visa portal account. Step number four, paying your US visa fee. Step number five, paying your service fee. Step number six, booking your visa appointment. Step number seven, attending the biometric. And step number eight, attending the visa interview. So these are the eight steps. And if you follow the steps in this order, you will be completing the process very smoothly without forgetting or missing out anything. But do keep in mind that step number five is flexible. That means the service fee part, because service fee is only required before the visa interview. So you can push step five a little bit down and pay it later, but do keep reminders for it because every year we see people who forget to pay the service fee. So if you're not paying it right away, do ensure that you have a reminder for paying the service fee. Now, once we've understood this process, let's go a little bit deeper into it and see what are the changes we can do once we have started the process. So we'll take two scenarios. First scenario is when an appointment is not booked. And the second scenario is when an appointment is booked. So if the appointment is not booked, then you have a lot of flexibility with you because you can pretty much change everything. You can change your I-20, your service, and your DS-160. So if you, even if you have created the portal, paid the visa fee, and then you realize that, okay, I have a new I-20 with me and I want to change my details, you can do that. So let's see how exactly this can be done. So if you're at a stage where you have made the visa portal, but you haven't paid the visa fee yet, then all you need to do is to delete the application. So on the left side of the portal, you will see the tab of manage applications, or you will see close and start new application. All that you have to do is click on that, close the application, and then start a completely new application. And in this new application, you give details of your new service and new I-20. 
and then go ahead, pay the visa fee and proceed ahead. In case you have filled the DS-160 form earlier, then you can also fill a completely new DS-160 form and use the new DS-160 number details when you create the new application. The case number two, let's say that you have created the visa portal and you've also paid the visa fee. In this case also, you have all the flexibility with you, you need not worry. Here also start by closing the old application. So close the old application, start a new application wherein you will enter details from new I-20. And even if the DS-160 form has been filled and submitted, you can just fill a new form with the new university details and use that to complete the new application. Then when it comes to fee payment, you don't have to pay the visa fee again. You will see an option of claim payment. So just click on that claim payment and that will enable you to claim the old payment that you have already done and then you can proceed ahead to booking your visa slot. So you can see that as long as you have not crossed step number six, that is your appointment is not booked, you have all the flexibility with you just by closing old applications, starting a new application and making sure that you have the right DS-160 form with you, you can do all the steps again without paying any additional fee. Now let's consider scenario number two, that is your visa appointment is already booked. So if your visa appointment is already booked, it becomes a little tricky because you cannot go back and change your service or even fact your DS-160 number. So what you'll have to do now is to cancel the appointment. So if you're really keen on going with the new university, then the only option would be to cancel the existing appointment and then start the entire process again, wherein you start a new application, fill in the correct details from the I-20 and the DS-160 number, then uh, you can claim the old payment again and then make the appointment again. So this obviously is a little cumbersome and given the uncertainty with regarding slots, it's not the best way to proceed ahead. But if you have no other option with you, then this is the only way forward. A small note here about DS-160 form. So DS-160 form is a little bit more flexible. Let's say that you've already submitted the form, but later you realize that there were certain errors in the form, maybe with respect to your sponsorship or maybe with respect to your work description or the description for reason for refusal. Then you still have time till biometric because you can fill a new DS-160 form and take the old and the new one with you to the biometric and ask them to update it. So as long as the university details, service, all of that is correct, other details of the DS-160 form can be changed till the biometrics. So do keep that in mind. So I hope I've covered all the scenarios and this clears out the entire process to you. If you have any more doubts left or, or if there's anything else that you've come across which has not been explained in this video, please do leave it in the comment section below. Would love to get back and help you. You can also work one-to-one -one with me, so you can sign up for any of the sessions we have, single session, mock session, or we even have packages. Our most popular is the seven-day package, and this is like end-to-end -end preparation because we start by understanding your profile, filling your DS-160 form, structuring the answers for you, and putting you through multiple mocks. Uh, so details of all the good stuff is right below in the description box. And like I said, do join the WhatsApp community. Uh, we're going to be guiding you and helping you throughout this visa journey. You can also DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at shashi.mal. So you can also reach out to me here. Uh, before I go, a quick update about slots. I know a lot of you are waiting anxiously for slots, but in my opinion, uh, and this is purely based on the last year trends plus whatever communication embassy has been putting out. So putting all of these pieces of information together, I really feel that the slots are gonna be released somewhere between mid-May to end of May. And you can expect again the same bulk opening of slots to follow this year as well. So mid to end May is what we are expecting it, uh, but you should obviously start your preparation right away. Get all of these basics in place, especially the DS-160 form, create your visa portal, pay your fee, and just be ready to book that appointment. And of course, we'll be bringing more updates to you as and when we receive it. So do follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and the WhatsApp community as well. Signing off for now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.